Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Kyle Van Noy, and this is the KVN Show. I'm Kyle Van Noy, if you didn't know. Loose of the football, scooped up by Van Noy. Groin injury, but Van Noy on the other side makes a play this time. Jim pressure's coming. Tannehill is sacked. Kyle Van Noy. At Seattle, coming up, and this is a pick by Kyle Van Noy. I'm excited to bring you the KVN show back for the rest of the season and through the playoffs. Today, I'll be discussing the rain game versus the Rams. Oh wait, the Lambs over this past weekend where we caught a dub in week 14. I'm also gonna talk about other games that happened in week 14, as well as get into a little preview of the games in week 15. I'm also having some random shit that I'll talk about in sports world. And then I'm going to give my flowers, the people that deserve it over this past weekend, get a shout them out, give them some love, give their flowers. Let's get it started. Week 14 Rams versus the Ravens. Yes. 37-31 victory over the Rams. What an incredible win. But let's get to the good, the bad and the great. The good offensive line, really, really good. They blocked really well in the run game. They had holes for Keaton. They had holes for Lamar. They had holds for Gus and Justice. Did a really, really good job of holding and sustaining their blocks in this game in the run game. The other side the pass game. They were holding up for Lamar. Lamar was able to get the ball, push the ball downfield, had an elite play to OBJ on a double move. You know, fixed his route, went deep, caught the ball, and then hit this elite celly. I can't move like he can, but he hit that and he did his thing on that celebration. Isaiah likely also had a touchdown on a broken coverage play, but give kudos to Lamar for seeing him, throwing him the rock and him getting into the end zone. Lastly, the touchdown to tie the game was a MVP moment for me, I think. Lamar had his MVP moment on a third and long, getting a, buying a little time and hitting Zay Flowers over the end zone line for a touchdown and then hit him again for the two point conversion to put us in overtime. I believe Lamar is in that MVP discussion along with Dak and Tua. What a performance by the O-line and the offense in this game. They were the really good part in this game. All right, let's go over the bad defense. We kind of played like shit. We not up to our standard, not how we want to play, not Ravens defense. Uh, we did enough to get the job done, but disappointing performance for us. I just felt like we we're a little off balance, but give props to McVay. He did a really good job scheming us up. Stafford is playing really, really good football. He has two premier wide receivers and Cooper Cup, who had his best game, 115 yards, a touchdown, played really well. Puka also had one of the best catches I've ever seen. The diving catch in the rain with no gloves, fingers taped. I mean, that was spectacular. What a play by him. Shout out to my Brigham Young alum. Um, but, you know, what a job they did. And we just were off. You know, one one time we would have really, really good rush and then the coverage would be off. Or one time we'd have really good, really, really good coverage and the rush, we just didn't put it together in this game, but we did just enough to get this win and get, get it pulled off, which is awesome. Another bad thing is losing a player like Kyle Hamilton. He's a superstar. He does so many things well in our defense. He plays about three positions on our team. I mean, he does it all. And losing a player like that in a game like that is tough. I mean, the Rams are, you know, trying to make the playoffs and making a push, so they brought it, and then us, trying to get that uh, number one seed as well as win our AFC North. So a lot at stake in this game and we just didn't play up to our standard. Simple as that, no sugar coating and we need to be better. Let's talk about the great in this game. It's gotta be the game winning play in OT. My favorite play of the game, Tylen Wallace punt return. Boy, you would have thought he was getting tackled five times, but before we get into the play, let's go over before what happened, before the play, during the game, Tylen actually lined up offside 
on a punt return. He got one of the biggest sins in football where the team is punting the ball to our team and he lines up offsides and gives them a freeze first down. The coaches let him have it. He was getting cussed out. So him to have the mindset to not even let that get in his head because he knew he screwed up. He deserved that cussing because we were all upset about that play. He ends up pushing that to the side and said, you know, middle fingers to everybody. I'm the punt returner now. He actually filled in for somebody who got hurt, Duve, and took, fielded the punt in overtime. He took it, juked a couple people, hit the wall return. There was a wall return set up. He got hit three or four times, kept his balance and kept running for the touchdown and called game. He called the Steph Curry where he just kind of, you know, it's time to go to sleep, game over. And the best part about it is in the locker room, he kind of gave us a little insight that he felt like he was dying because he had all the guys uh, in the huddle with them going crazy and they kind of smashed him against the wall. He couldn't breathe. He was so excited, could barely talk. It was such an exciting moment for our team to get a victory like that. Such a back and forth game. So much on the line in the overtime to get to 10 and three and to do it like that with a game winning punt return. Oh. Awesome, can't get, that's the, that's the great for the game. All right, I touched on it a little bit, but we gotta talk about the MVP, Lamar Jackson. I mean, what a performance he had, being able to push the ball, being able to scramble, being able to get away from Aaron Donald, who had him a couple of times, but was so shifty in the pocket to get out, sling the ball down the field, just even if it was a check down or scramble to pick up a extra yards, that is frustrating for a defense and for the league he's been doing it all year he's got his best percentage throwing the ball he's at like about 68 percent he's got over 3,000 yards and only gonna get more I think you know his touchdowns aren't as high but his play is at an all-time high I think the race is between him Dak Prescott and Tua but I'm going with my main man, Action Jackson, right now. I, we got four games left, and I think this is gonna be a tight race between those three. And I can't wait for it, because I'm gonna have a front row seat to Action Jackson the rest of the way. Let's go over the week 14 matchups that I was able to watch, the games that were very important, the most games that were important to me, the Chiefs versus the Bills. Two high-powered, arguably the best quarterbacks in the game, Josh Allen versus Patrick Mahomes. We thought we were gonna get, you know, fireworks, right? Like the AFC Championship game they had a couple years ago. No, you didn't get that. You got actually a defensive battle. This was a defensive game back and forth. The Bills went up early. The Chiefs roared back to get in the game and they tried and they had a chance to win the game. We need to just go jump into the last play. There was a questionable call. There was a play call. You will see the snapshot right here. He was lined up just a little off sides. I think it's the right call in 2023. They said this was a, a emphasis. They've called it 11 times and this was was the call of the game because on this play, Tony scored. Kelsey made a hell of a play, a play that I think more teams should use the lateral. He was open, he caught the ball, he was running. He saw Tony's defender leave him, saw him wide open and lateraled the ball back and Tony scores and they would have won the game most likely, but beep, 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 you got a back. lined up offsides and that was the game that decided the game it really did and I it was the right call whether you're mad or whatever because in 2019 I believe this is kind of karma for the Chiefs because in 2019 when I played for the Patriots Nikhil Harry did not step out of bounds there was also a PI call a really bad one they missed on Philip Dorsett and another one Steph Gilmore picked up a fumble from Travis Kelsey and they called him down and he wasn't down. So I believe it's kind of a little bit of karma, but at the same time, I, I feel the frustration 
from Patrick Mahomes. He felt like that wasn't supposed to be called. He also has been, you know, putting the team on his back this year, playing really, really good football. And I think it's trickled from the game previous from the Packers game where there was that crazy no call PI. I think, you know, I'm on I'm on Mahomes on this one. I, I mean, I would be frustrated just like him because he's playing really well and to have the game decided by the rest, even though he was in the wrong, I feel his frustration, but you know, it is what it is. You know, the Bills win their playoff push is still alive. The Chiefs are still winning their division, but they might have to play a couple road games in the playoffs this year. We'll, we'll see. We got four games left, a lot to shake out, but we'll see. And that was a hell of a game. And that ending was wild. That touchdown was wild. That game was wild. But let's go to the next one. The next matchup, Sunday night football, Eagles versus the Cowboys. All right, Sunday night football. This was a good one, a much anticipated game. Eagles versus Cowboys. Eagles beat them the first game in a close one. I mean, the Cowboys felt like they had the better team. Dak stepped out of bounds before he scored. I mean, it was a close one in the game one, but the Eagles won. Now, Sunday night football, who's gonna win? I mean, are the Eagles in trouble? Going back to back losses, getting whooped by the Niners and then getting pretty beat up pretty good from the Cowboys. protection from the O-line giving Dak so much time. I mean, Dak was doing his warm-up pregame, his hip thing, where he was just out there doing this and was able to just throw dots all over the place to open receivers. I mean, him and C.D. Lamb right now are a dynamic duo. He also has Brandon Cooks playing really, really well, and their tight end, Jake Ferguson, looking like a young Jason Witten. He is balling. I mean, they have three real high-quality threat at the receiving position. And then you have Pollard kind of getting in a rhythm. He's getting some touches, making some plays, but those three are dynamic right now, and Dak is playing at an MVP level. The Eagles, man, his hurts pretty banged up. I feel like he's pretty banged up. Their O-line didn't play as well as they normally do in the receivers. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith struggled. Goddard came back, didn't really have much in effect in this game. Their defense had some plays. Fletcher Cox, strip sack, and the big Jalen Carter take it to the house. He was fast on that play, but that was really about it. Other than that, Cowboys dominated this game from start to finish. And the Eagles have a big question mark because they go back to back losses. Now who's gonna win their division? I don't know. And then the Eagles, I believe, have a tough matchup next week. Now let's pivot after the Cowboys Eagles game and talk about some preview games of week 15. The Cowboys travel to Buffalo. They're seeing a pissed off Bills team vying for a playoff spot. How are they gonna act? What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Josh Allen's throwing the rock. He's running the rock. Offense looked better. Defense controlled the last game, getting after Mahomes. Can they do it going against a better O-line? And Dak Prescott, who's playing an MVP type season. It's gonna be in Buffalo, so it's gonna be a little chilly. How's Dallas gonna do in that? weather they're not in the dome they're really really good at home they put up 40 points they're a little different on the road how are they gonna act can that defense carry over against josh allen and stop him he is a problem when he has the ball in his hands can their offense run the ball a little bit better because that's where buffalo struggles a little bit is in the run game i'm excited to see this matchup in week 15. now let's preview my game our game, the Ravens flock family, Sunday night football. Woo -wee. I love it. We got Jacksonville coming up. We're on the road though this time on Sunday night football. We're in Duval. I love that shit before the game. I think it's one of the best chants in all of football. I love it. Their electricity of the fans. They really do a good job. They got the swimming pool. It's such a vibe. I would never get in there. I think it's disgusting, but the fans love it. So 
whatever. Kudos to them. I think it's a tremendous atmosphere. I'm excited to play down there. Now, let's talk about a little bit about the game. Trevor Lawrence, how is he gonna be off the ankle injury? He played this last week against the Browns. They're also coming off back-to-back -back losses, so you know they're gonna bring their A game. They wanna hold their one, one seed in their division, as well as they wanna battle for the number one spot in the AFC as well. They're gonna come ready. The defense is stingy. They have Josh Allen, who has a lot of sack at DN. He's playing really, really good ball. Their inside linebackers, Devin Lloyd, has been making some plays as of late. And, you know, they're making some noise on defense a little bit. Offensively, they're always tough to stop. Travis Etienne playing good ball. Let's discuss a little bit about college football this weekend. Army versus Navy America's game. This is America's game. Sold out crowd. I mean, it was buzzing in Gillette Stadium. I also saw Pat McAfee on the show with RKK, Mr. Kraft, as well as Billy B, Bill Belichick on the show. Bill put on his Navy hat. That was pretty dope. He did a throwback. Also, Pat, my guy gave some RKK, some statement. I don't think it was a big deal. I think more people made it a bigger deal than it was. It wasn't even like that. It was the fact that he has tough decisions. You know, I don't think it was Pat doing anything like that, making a crazy statement or being an a-hole to RKK. I think it was the, you know, simple fact that he has a tough job that he's gonna have to make changes with because that's what you have to do when you're not having a good season. So, you know, I wanna clear that for Pat too. I don't wanna speak for him, but as a friend, I know that wasn't his, you know, what he wasn't trying to do, but let's get into America's game. Army versus Navy. This game was awesome. Army had control the entire game. The entire game, they were up at halftime 10 nothing. Then they go into the second half. They end up going up a little bit more. They make it 17-11. Navy scored 11 points in the fourth quarter to make a comeback. And then they were on the last yard and they run a QB sneak and get stuffed. Game over, Army wins America's game of the year. They got bragging rights for another year. Incredible, shout out to you Army. I hope you guys are still celebrating. That is awesome, appreciate. Thank you guys for your service. You guys are amazing. Thank you to Navy as well. I'm sorry for your loss, but it's Army's year. All right, this might be my favorite segment, the weekly flowers. Smell the flowers. We gotta give flowers to those that are deserving. Everybody loves flowers. If you don't, you suck. But we're gonna give people some much love and their flowers. I'm gonna give my first flowers to Zach Wilson. I mean, he's taken a lot of shit from New York media. He got benched and then watched his offense be even more abysmal since he wasn't at the realm and it kind of made him and America see like, hey, Zach Wilson wasn't the problem. And then the drama that came out and then Aaron Rodgers going on Pat McAfee and basically saying that the Jets screwed that up and can't believe that there were sources in and out. I mean, what, what a shit show that must have been. And you know, Zach was in a tough pl place. Like the teams benched him twice. Like, what do you do? The kid is like, you know what? Middle fingers to everybody, I'm gonna go ball. And boy, did he ball. He threw for 300 plus yards and two touchdowns and a big win against the Texans. The Jets defense also played well. But Zach Wilson, for everything that you've been through lately and then coming out and having the game you had, you deserve some flowers. All right, the next person that deserves flowers, I'm supposed to hate because they play for a division rival of the Ravens. This is going to a Browns player, Joe Flacco, coming off straight off the couch university, just like me, all pro off the couch, just like me. And boy, is he playing good football. 38 years of experience. And man, he's throwing the ball really, really well down the field. He had over 300 yards and three touchdowns. Smell the flowers, Joe. You deserve them. You beat a really good Jacksonville team at your house. You deserve some flowers. Lastly, my last set of flowers goes to Bronny James. Actually, no, second to the last flowers. This one goes to Bronny James. I mean, 
to have a cardiac arrest over the summer. I mean, prayers went up for you to battle all the medical stuff behind the scenes that no one else seen but you and your family and your teammates and your friends and to be able to suit up doesn't even matter if you caught what came off the bench none of that points whatever doesn't matter it's bigger than that you were able to play and to me that's remarkable i had my son have some medical stuff over the summer and he's doing really well really well and i can't imagine the feelings you had and i just want to give you the flower the give you flowers you deserve them to even be able to suit up and play what a moment that is i hope you soaked that up like i know you did i know your family did amazing you deserve some flowers all right last set of flowers actually goes to my wife Woo -wee. she's living out west i'm while i'm working in baltimore she's ha handling the kids she flew out for this weekend's game against the rams i mean she did everything around the house she cleaned up for me she did the laundry she deserved the flowers love you babe thanks for taking care of the kids and doing everything you do love you thank you you deserve some flowers too those are my weekly flowers thank you guys for this segment i love this segment can't wait to do it some more we're gonna have some real flowers next time so we can smell them this time we got fake ones all love those are my week of the flowers all right everybody thank you so much for tuning in to the kvn show i'm your host kyle van noy thank you so much i cannot wait to give you guys more content for the rest of the season and the playoffs Stay tuned. Peace out. I'm Calvin Noyes. You didn't know. <laughs>